dangerous or plain giant. The following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. What up and welcome back. It's your girl Jane, the plainest Jane, and we got some syrup to get into. You've seen the thumbnail, okay? You've read the title. We need to discuss some things. So come on in, hit thumbs up. We are on for our second bus ride this evening. We were on earlier today, and I'm back to pick y'all up again. So make sure y'all pay y'all fair and y'all hit the thumbs up button while we get this locomotive in motion, okay? Y'all know things are always sticky in Hollywood and in real life, and y'all know I just had to come back and talk about Tierra Mac, right? Again, we know this is the senator of Rhode Island who was twerking on a handstand, okay? And she's caught a lot of flack and a lot, you know, the least of my worries is her twerking. It's really about the bill that she's trying to pass right now, which is an attempt to merge into the curriculum of six to 12th graders, right? Is to put masturbation teaching in schools, okay? Again, she's trying to introduce a bill which, where they are able to extensively teach some of the best practices of how to masturbate to sixth through 12th graders into the school curriculum. So teachers will be teaching this is at least what she's trying to propose in the bill, right? So we're going to be talking about that. Um, we're going to be talking about um, involuntary relocation. If you've been anywhere around the news and the media lately, you already know what that's about. We're going to dive into it and my thoughts, and I want to know what y'all think about it too. We're going to get into Macy Gray's controversy as well. Y'all know Macy Gray hit the headlines earlier this week with a whole bunch of controversy with respect to um, her perspective on trans women, right? And the trans community. And then we're going to get into Ray J and what he's got going on, a, a brand new tattoo that he has and, you know, some other viral moments and things that have been going on in social media. So again, have a seat on the bus. I'm here to take y'all through a couple of neighborhoods here on the Black News Bus. Shout out to everybody in the live chat. Thank you to my mods and thank you to my channel members. I see there was a new person that joined the channel as well before we got started. So look, thank y'all so much. Buckle in. Let's get ready for takeoff and um, <laughs> let's do this. The plane is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I loves me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? All right, and we're back. Y'all know what time it is. This is a full show that we got this evening, so I hope that y'all enjoy it. This is the Black News Bus, and if you don't know the Black News Bus, it's a social media stroll. We stroll through social media. We talk about what's going on inside of the celebrity world, what's going on outside of the celebrity world, things that are affecting everyday people like you and me, and you know I'm always going to throw some Black history in there as well. So real quick, I hope that you've got your mental health intact. Talk about that in the beginning of every video. Make sure your invisible problems are addressed before you get into all that we're discussing this evening. Shout out to my new subscribers and thank you for 8,000. And of course, before I get into breaking down today's topics and viral events, make sure you subscribe and thumbs up or down. Either way, I appreciate it. But make sure you think critically and independently, regardless of what you heard from me or anybody else. So, Tiara Mack, look, 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 sis. It's giving too much. It's giving too much. And thank y'all for coming in and dropping y'all pancakes. So we four minutes and we we good to go. Hopefully y'all are having a good week so far. It's we're about nine minutes shot of Friday junior. Okay. So this was actually a short week because we had a long weekend, but hopefully y'all are having a good week so far. And we're, we're almost through. We're almost through. I know I told y'all when I got done the last video that I was going to eat dinner, that I was going to like get off, eat a little something, something and come back. Child, I figured if I ate, I wasn't going to be able to come back. I was going to get the itis. So I ain't eat. I said, you know what? I'm going to eat after I do this. So I just decided to do some extra prep and um, just kind of sit back a little bit. So I haven't ate yet, by the way, but y'all can still tell me what y'all are having or what you've had for dinner down below in the chat. Okay. Um. So let's get started, okay? So we're talking about, Lord have mercy, we're talking about the senator of Rhode Island who decided that she wanted to twerk on a handstand, literally, 
You know what I'm saying? Like she's a city girl. And again, that's that's not really the main problem, right? We know black Twitter absolutely positively did their thing. <laughs> I uh the shade room had reposted my tweet that um I did on it because again, I'm more so worried about the policies that she is trying to put into schools, the responsibility that she is trying to give teachers by skipping over the home. Um, and, and something that really isn't school appropriate, in my opinion. So this is a tweet that the Shade Room reposted of mine that said, not only is Rhode Island Senator Tierra Mack twerking for votes, but she's also pushing a sex ed bill to teach 6th to 12th grade students how to masturbate by adding comprehensive pleasure-based sex to school curriculums. And you know what? I find a problem with it. I find a problem. I find a problem. I find a problem with it. I want to know what you all think about it down below in the comments. There are a lot of people who feel like there's nothing wrong with it. They feel like it's necessary. They feel like I'm crazy for pointing out how, how, <laughs> like how wrong this is. Like, isn't this, isn't this basic math that teaching kids how to, because listen, if you're talking about self-pleasure, everybody don't, you know, self-pleasure So you're going to be talking about toys. You're going to be talking about the G spot. You're going to be, well, you know what? The G spot might come up in natural when they go over the orgasm, but that's it. That's it. Only because you have to learn about the male orgasm in order to, right. So I remember sex ed, but the, the fact of the matter is, the fact of the matter is sex ed is supposed to teach you the basics, right? Again, my main issue is not even with her twerking, although that decorum and her response to, um, a lot of different people and what she put on, um, you know, what she put on TikTok after that was pretty, pretty ratchet, right? The twerking wasn't ratchet. Her responses were quite ratchet. Um, and, it, it, you know, with respect to what her, what she's postured as, like how she's positioned, right? But sex ed in schools, truthfully, is supposed to be the anatomy, the science of the body, right? How to get pregnant preventative care, right? Contraceptive, contraceptives, um, puberty, right? The period, napkins, tampons, um, and STI prevention, right? Contraceptives, birth, like the, the basic sciences, like how the, like, that's it. Not rub here, touch here, do this. It's cool. To, it'll feel better if you, like you, you shouldn't be teaching children how to enjoy sex by themselves or with others in school. You shouldn't be teaching them how to enjoy it on, on some sort of a, like that's, that's just asinine to me. That's just asinine to me. But we're going to pull up the paperwork. <laughs> we're going to pull up the paperwork and talk about, cause I'm like, that's, that's, that's something that needs to be going on at home. And even everybody's got a different journey, right? Um, I could. Did your parents teach you how to masturbate? I'm asking you. It's like this is one of them videos that YouTube definitely. I'm using too many words, right? So look, I always tell you, you can donate for free by hitting the thumbs up button. But if you also want to send something to the cash app, or if you want to send a super chat, definitely feel welcome because this is gonna be one of the videos they ain't pushing through the algorithm. So if you can't send anything through cash app or through the super chat, make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button. It's a free way to support. But nonetheless, there's just too much that they're trying to put into the schools and the schools already ain't doing enough. In my opinion, these kids are graduating. They can barely read. They can barely write. They don't know the three different branches of government. They're not financially literate. They don't know how to do their taxes. They don't know how credit works. Um, they are definitely sustainable, right? Like able to become prey, right? The predatory practices when you're 18 years old and you walk into a financial institution and you only have a, a, a checking in the savings account. They realize you don't have a credit card. So now they pushing this on you, right? They, they, they don't get that. Not only do they not have any basic financial literacy, they, there's no home economics. They don't know what job etiquette is. They don't know how to interview. They don't know how to find jobs. There's enough boxes that already exists that they aren't able to tick and get to and check off. Why are we at Why are we complicating this shit unnecessarily? This is indoctrination. There's no reason anybody outside of the household, that's some sex shop shit. 
you go to a sex shop to figure out, well, you know, I haven't been able to get my pleasure this way, that way, by myself, with my partner. And you go to some sort of expert or something. Like, okay, here's how you reach this. Here's the rabbit. Here's the butt. Like all these different options. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck does that need to be in schools for? Excuse my French. Are you serious? Because first of all, everybody's different. So it's not like you just going to be, you know what I'm saying? Like I seen somebody quote tweet my tweet that I put on Twitter and the guy was like, you know, it's funny as shit to think about going to school and learning how to beat your meat. Them teaching you to beat your meat in school. Because what, like, <laughs> like what's going on? Everybody don't do it the same way. So that means you're going to be going over all these different ways to, that's crazy as hell. It's, that sound like y'all just going to be setting up in the middle of the Spencer in the Hot Topic store where the vibrators are in the back. Don't ask me how I know. If you, you get to be a certain age, you just know. But like, it's just too much. <laughs> it's too much going on. They're crossing the line. It's, 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 it's uncalled for. This is what she tweeted. I'm really excited for the House Sex Ed Bill hearing later today. Teach a comprehensive, queer, inclusive, pleasure-based sex ed was a highlight of my time teaching. Then I'm going to show you the paperwork for the bill in a second. Just, just so you know, it's not a game. I'm not exaggerating. It's not a game. I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up the paperwork. The thing about her, she 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 feels as though she's special um, because she's the first. She, she, she this is. Her history is that she is the first openly queer um, LGBTQ black senator of Rhode Island, right? And so, I mean, she already had made history with just just that alone, her like her mere existence. And you know, this this campaign and 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 some of the stuff that she's trying to push, I just find that to be more problematic. Like her orientation is not an issue, right? It's a matter of this bill that she's trying to put into schools. We already got to be concerned enough with what's going on in the schools, what's not going on in, in the schools, and so on and so forth. And, and then we can listen to her actual response to all of this stuff. So here is the bill that she's trying to introduce. And of course, let me let me zoom in some more so that y'all can y'all can see what we're working with here, right? So you can see it's from this year. You can see it says. Um, that provided further courses in family life or sex education shall be appropriate for students of all races, genders, sexual orientations, ethnic, ethnic and cultural backgrounds. And here's the part. And shall affirmatively recognize pleasure-based sexual relations, different sexual orientations, and to be inclusive of same-sex relationships in discussions and examples, right? So the highlighted part shall affirmatively recognize pleasure-based relations, right? For six to 12th graders. And would you believe it or not, there were, you know, some of her stands and people who were pro this, arguing me down. I mean, all day today, arguing me down how they feel like masturbation should be something that is taught in the schools, I feel like you should be taught at home and by your parents, if anything. Uh, and everyone has a different experience. My personal experience is I just couldn't imagine my mother. You know, th there's a there's a, a a line between self discovery and learning stuff. And like, don't get me wrong. Like, what, one of the the laziest examples, something that we all know to be true, is that porn has some pretty harmful imagery in general. So some of the people who are arguing with me today were like, oh, um, uh, it, it's better than them learning from porn, which is so harmful. Porn is not there to teach your kids how to exist in any fashion, just like anything that you would see on the screen, social media, movies, television, et cetera, et cetera. But that doesn't mean that you should skip over the household and trusted individuals right within their own comfort level and however much they're willing to explain the sign off on you know like letting out that doesn't mean that school officials then have the authority to teach your kids 
about different clitoral or internal or what type of tool or this, that, and the third, like that's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. And the goalpost, it continues to move in this generation. And it's, it's, it's pretty freaking scary. It's scary. Oh, y'all just try to demonize sex education, sex education and how to tweak things to work for you specifically, right? You can't put everything on the school system. Like stop playing with me. Like there should be a way for you to safely retrieve information about how to discover yourself. And there are plenty of ways, but some of these ways, you know, 16 and 15 and 14 year olds who are exploring themselves, they find some of those things to be corny and they would rather just experiment themselves. And, and you can't force them, of, you know, how they're going to necessarily learn about the technique of sex. You can teach them science, how a baby is made. It takes sperm. It takes an egg. How is sperm made? How is this made? The reproductive or organs, how the male condom works, how the female condom works, how spermicide works, how contraceptives work, how abortions work, how STI prevention works. That's it. That's it. Why are we making this hard? It doesn't make sense. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to me. Senate committee education, you can see Senate bill 2285. Again, you've seen that number on the last page. And you can see the meeting information. They had this on April the 27th. She submitted this and it's, you know, look, Teaching masturbation in school, it's, it's quite, it's quite sick. Sexualizing these kids, sexualizing these children, it's quite sick. Like that just, learning about masturbation, wouldn't you think at any point in time that that would even arouse you in that moment as, as an adult? Like, let them know, like, that's, that's just not like, they're going to do it anyway. That's also a lazy ass excuse. A lot of them are going to do drugs and drink two before they turn 18 and 21. Does that mean we need to facilitate it and have it happen in the middle of the class, right? Teach them how to safely do without, teach them how to safely shoot up without getting H, is that what we're going to call it? HIV prevent, disease prevention? Because we're going to teach them how to shoot up here so that they don't go learn it in the streets. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Red wig arguing with me all day, up and down about it. Two-year-old people, you know, children start masturbating as young as two years old. It's completely normal. And you're sex negative because you don't want these kids to be taught about sex at school, which has nothing to do with their genitalia. And the fact that you jump straight to genitalia says more about you as a person. I'm like, if you're teaching kids how to masturbate, what the fuck do you mean it don't have nothing to do with their genitalia? Kids shouldn't have to... She, the, the girl was arguing with me all day and I just finally, I just finally let out. I just finally let out because she was doing too goddamn much. Girl, leave me alone. You don't agree, you don't agree, but you, you, you over here 10 tweets to my one trying to argue me down about how kids deserve to learn about how to masturbate the best way possible in the sixth grade. And, and you're fucking nuts. <laughs> you're nuts. Right. Are they going to show examples? They will have replicas and say, rub this way, hit this way, use this angle certain time. You know what I'm saying? What lube to use? Like, what are they going to do? Like, what are they going to do? Everybody, everybody does it different. That's too much. A whole class. <laughs> absolutely not <laughs> you know why crunchy was so concerned about it I'm, I'm gonna tell you why in a second before i get to roasting her further um so here's the data that she gave right she's like oh well you know they they need to be learning about how to masturbate in school because they start masturbating as young as two years old there's nothing wrong with them exploring their body nobody ever said that there was anything wrong with them exploring your body are you crazy Stop Stop talking in circles and riddles and shit and trying to play semantics when we talking about serious shit, the indoctrination and principal mind of children. Please stop playing with me. It says early exploration. As children learn to walk and talk, they also begin to learn about their bodies. Open the door to sex education by teaching your child the proper names for his or her sexual organs, perhaps during bath time. 
If your child points to a body part, simply tell him or her what it is. This is also a good time to talk about which parts of the body are private. When your child, now mind you, everything here says your child. Your child, your child, your child. So you tell me, it's all saying your child. But them students ain't your children. They're your students. So you pulling up this data, red crunchy wig. <laughs> I'm very aware of the statistic that some, you know what I'm saying? Like I've read this statistic before and it's, you know, it's enough to make you stare, but I've, I've read this statistic years ago. When your child asks questions about his or her body or yours, don't giggle, laugh, or get embarrassed. Take the questions at face value and offer direct age appropriate responses. If your child wants to know more, he or she will ask. Expect self-stimulation, it says. Many toddlers express their natural sexual curiosity through self-stimulation. Boys may pull at their penises and girls may rub on their genitals. Teach your child that masturbation is normal, but private activity. That was her line of defense for the shit. Not only does this sound a little like you, you want me to encourage him to Rub things out at three, four, five, six, seven. Um, and then this was, it says, teach your child, you know, if your child is, you know, like this is, this, this is subjective to the parent that even wants to go by this, not the damn school. God damn, we go from talking about six through 12th graders and you bust up, they be two doing it. So yeah, like. Do you know, no, or are you just pulling up data? Do you be, because I'm not sure if you should be around kids. The way you talking, the way you really like, and and she, all, all morning she wanted to argue with me. All morning. I tried to leave it alone. I tried to give it to God. I tried to pray. I was like, just help me, you know, just like ignore her or whatever. Ignore her a couple times. She keeps fucking tweeting. I'm like, girl, if you don't agree, you don't agree. If you think the twerking senator in the masturbation in schools is cool, bitch, vote for her and get the hell up out of my face and my mentions. Well, I mean, she keeps going and I finally took a stroll over to her page and I click on her damn page and she got an OnlyFans for $3 a month. $3 a month, 75 cents a week, 10 cents a day. Her band is said only breasts. So you up here over here, oh, erotica pictures and shit. You over here banging them nipples together for 75 cents a week, 10 cents a day, arguing me up and down, making up motherfucking problems and words. Because you want the schools to teach these kids how to masturbate as young as sixth grade. You think that's appropriate? I'm smarter than you. You're too simple to understand. I'm having a sale. Bitch, sale or not, you have no business showing niggas your nipples seven fucking days a week for 10 cents a day, three quarters a week. You have no fucking business, but better yet, you do. You know your worth, and that's exactly what the fuck you're worth. Please get up out my mentions. You know, it was just, it, I, I, she's like, uh, and the wig was just too much. She's like, oh, you hate, it's not about hating sex workers. I don't have a problem with sex workers. I respect them. You are cheap. You're like, it's that price, that price. Flavor Flav, people who look like Flavor Flav, nobody should be charging less than, then the sale was, her typical price is $5 a month, girl. So you went from 125 a week to 75 cent a week. You tr stop arguing with me. Back away from the internet. Look, look, look. <laughs> look, for just three quarters a day. It's too much. This this is the data that she gives me to excuse what's going on in the school systems. What she wants to go on in the school systems anyway. 
Then there's a 17 year old down there co-signing her. And she, there's nothing wrong with it because it's better than what we're going to learn from porn. But what do I know? I'm just a little dumb 17 year old. Like, uh, fucking yeah, you are. <laughs> uh, yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah, I'm, what, but what do I know? No, that's sarcasm, baby. <laughs> Come on. It's just too much. It's too much. But honestly, like, where where is humanity headed? Where is humanity headed at this point? Because if 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 this is what they really want to happen in the school systems, like we we're truly doomed. Rhode Island ought to be. Rhode Island actually is ashamed of themselves as this story continued to make its way around the globe, um, and it went viral. A lot of you know people all around the nation, right? No, the other countries do be laughing at us. So, uh, but nonetheless, Rhode Island is quite uh, ashamed. You know, Rhode Island is never in the news. We've heard all of the 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 Rhode Island residents speaking out about this. Like, we ain't never and we ain't never trending. We ain't never nothing. And as soon as we get to trending, it's it's about is I am embarrassed. I've seen a lot of people from Rhode Island just em embarrassed, <laughs> girl. Girl, it is it's it's not giving what it post that had gave. What did you think? What did you think you were doing for a Klondike bar? I just can't with her. I just can't. And the internet was very quick, and very quick. You know, I was I was on Black Twitter doing what I do. <laughs> on Black Twitter doing what I do. But yeah, it it it's it's just giving too much. It's just giving too much. I, I want y'all to to uh, listen to her actual response to this because a lot of people just seen the video. Some people just seen the pictures and it was like enough. But I want y'all to see what she actually had to say. Okay. Let me get into this video. You're not about to listen to no ad. Let me see. Thank you so much, Nia, for the $9.99 super sticker. I appreciate it so much. And look, if you haven't already taken a moment to hit that dang one thumbs up button, I don't know what you're waiting for. Hit the thumbs up button. We have a lot more of a good show to get into. Macy Gray's got that controversy, and I really want to know how y'all feel about that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take a listen to what... Senator Tierra, twerking Tierra Mac had to say when people asked her why she did what she did and as she snapped back at people online. Hey, thanks for letting me keep you connected and in the know with what's happening in the black world. Don't forget to smash on that like button for support and for more black news. Okay. Gyrating in a bikini on the- Not gyrating. A Rhode Island state lawmaker gyrating in a bikini on the beach and posting it on social media. It's getting national attention tonight. The video has been viewed thousands of times and received thousands of comments, including prominent right-wingers who were jumping in. They're having a field day with her. NBC10 political reporter Brian Crandall live in Providence with reaction and the response. Well, Gene, it was quite a physical feat, but State Senator Tiara Max 4th of July seaside twerk is creating buzz for reasons she wants to criticize. Upside down, shaking her backside. And Senator Tiara Mack's TikTok post comes with a campaign message at the end. Vote Senator Mack. The progressive Democrat from Providence's twerking post has gone viral, mostly eliciting criticism from the right. Mack tweeted after, damn, twerking upside down really makes the conservative unhinged internet accounts pop off on a Monday. And Mack returned my message, but refused to do an on-camera interview. She told me over the phone it's disappointing what is considered newsworthy in Rhode Island and that when it comes to coverage of her, we err on the side of racist and sexist tropes and do not cover her accomplishments in the legislature and as a national champion rugby player. Mac did go on TikTok to address some of the comments she's received and said the video will probably help her get reelected. My constituents freaking love that I'm a real person and fun and, you know, not a robot. I'm trying to determine which point of envy are these people mad at? Is it the Ivy League degree? Is it the sitting state center? Is it the like the bodacious body? Because like the hay is real and abundant. Governor Dan McKee's reaction when asked about it is priceless too. I have not seen it. <laughs> what, what was the term you used? Twerking. <laughs> Twerking. I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and on the street in Providence, the area Mac represents, 
reaction on if that's something an elected leader should be doing. I literally seen it like maybe 20, 25 minutes ago. So what do you think of that? She's a state senator. I mean, it's all in fun, but I mean, if she was serious trying to get attention, that's not the positive attention you need if you want to be a state senator. I say vote for her. I think anyone that is offended by it probably wishes that they had the boldness to go out there and do it themselves. And Mac's opponent in the Democratic Senate primary, Joe Almeida, told me that he found the video not only disrespectful to the Senate, but also as a father of daughters, he said it was an insult to all women. The Republican in the race, Adriana Bonilla, told me she has respect for all people, but said after watching Mac's video, she was left without words. And the state Republican Party is now trying to fundraise off that video, trying to help Bonilla defeat Mac, calling Mac twerking Tiara Mac. I'm Brian Crandall, NBC 10 News, live in Providence. <clears throat> so, yeah, you're hating if you have any criticism about it, although she shared this um, on a national platform, literally. She knew the whole world was goddamn going to see. Okay. Um, look, I just, girl, it, it, what got me was the one acting like he didn't understand what twerking was. He said, what did you call it? And I heard he got a sugar baby. So he, if he got, he got a young sugar baby, he, he, he know what that is. He know what that is for sure. <laughs> he, he, he playing Ben, but okay. Girl, twerk if you want to, but just not you the, in these, these little dry clapbacks. They're very unseasoned. Okay. We can, we can tell you're not, you know, within the community, you know, um, because it's given unseasoned clapbacks. I just can't. I saw even more responses. Like you responded to like 30 got dang on people. And it's just not giving Senator behavior, right? And you're twerking for votes. And it's just, this is the problem with all of this. Like the goalpost continues to move. Everybody want to be on there. Let's, let's break the social norms. And breaking social norms can be a good thing, especially in closely related to like dated uh, respectability politics, right? Um, but when we talk about just a time and a place being for everything, like literally, like I can deal with the kids nowadays wanting to wear sneakers to the prom. I'm like, what the hell? Like we used to wear, you know, but I'm like, okay, they still want to wear like suits or whatever. Um, I see some weddings with jeans and stuff. Like I can't get with it, but like, I'm just, we're talking about a Senator twerking. I get it. We're having a lot of different culture shifts at one time, but people are just, they're taking it too far for you to want to be. First of all, nobody knew who you were before this. And she likes to use her education. I'm from an Ivy, this school and that like trying to flaunt your education. Book smarts don't make you street smarts. It definitely doesn't make you capable of reading the room and book smarts or all the knowledge that you claim makes you better than other people. It doesn't give you the right to spread, especially as it pertains to this bill. Forget you, your twerking cheeks and your birthmark that look like a piece of dookie to the left. Forget that. But just because you have all these book smarts doesn't mean that you just have the liberty to indoctrinate children and sexualize them. And, and I get it, you know, first black LGBT woman, queer inclusive. I totally understand, you know, schools talking about more than one type of sexual orientation, things outside of heterosexual and even just heterosexual and gay. Like I totally get that. But ch ch chill out with the masturbation at school. Like, it's just too much. It's just too much. <laughs> it's too much. Like I said, like, wh why are we teaching kids how to enjoy sex in school? Why? It doesn't make sense to me. Come on now. There's a, there's a lot missing out of school. Home economics, hell, back, look, look I'm a, I'm not a woman of a, of a particular age, but my grandmother definitely is. She used to tell me about how when they went to school, you couldn't graduate unless you knew how to swim. You had to swim all the way across the pool. And you and was it the boy? The boys had to pass home economics and the, the women's home economics was like something different. Like, again, these these kids, they graduate. They don't know how to do their taxes. I'm not going to say they don't know how to balance a checkbook because checkbooks are, are pretty obsolete. Just about kind of unless you're a boomer. 
they don't know how to do taxes. They don't know how credit works. They don't know how tipping works. Even if you don't agree with tipping, a lot of people, they graduate and they make hundreds and thousands of dollars sometimes a week by waiting tables. So understanding the, the, the fundamental, like, there's so much that they don't know. Job etiquette, interview etiquette. Some of them don't even know how to read and write, let alone have proper grammar or be able to spell correctly. Forget enunciation. There's so much that they already don't know. So I, I just, the need to consistently push these weird things. Like if you've seen, I, I put something on my community tab a while ago. It was like a, a sex orientation test or something they had gave the kids. And it's like, it's just too much. They're just like, oh, well, imagine how uncomfortable, you know, some communities feel when they're asked these questions. So we want to ask these questions to all the kids just so that they're used to how, you know, other communities are made to feel uncomfortable. Like, no, that's not okay. That's not okay. The questions were like in, in a way where it was like ma making them feel guilty for wherever, whatever their sexual ori orientation was, like heterosexual, oh, so you're heterosexual, like berating them about their, you know, however they felt or identified. And then the whole premise behind it was, well, just imagine how some of the, you know, how, how some of the other community feels. That doesn't mean you, like, that's weird. That's weird at school. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> but it, it, it's on a community tab. I plan on going to depth with that one in particular. Um, sometime next week, I believe, uh, when I do my, my issues under the flag segment, which it's risky, but God dang it, there's just a lot of people using the flag as a shield. Like, don't get me wrong, like predators and pedophiles, they hide in every community you can imagine, they're there. But there's just this pattern that just pops out that is just unavoidable where you can see they're clearly infiltrating and hijacking the LGBT community and using that flag and that label and that orientation as... Um, as a buffer and a way to get away with the things that they do because they know that a lot of people are hesitant to speak on or ask questions to or about the LGBTQIA plus community. And so they know that a there's a lot of apprehension there. So they're able to get away with a lot of stuff. And as you peel the onion layers back, you just find so much that's being done there outside of just the questionable things inside of the classroom. You're finding that a so many cases of the teachers sleeping with the students, sleeping with the students, touching the students inappropriately, you know, porn, rent, child, like the, all types of stuff. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so one of the things that I do, and, and a lot of the stuff is actually being placed directly in the schools. You've got teachers conspiring against the parents saying, we're going to keep the parents out of this and we're going to call the students what we want to call the students. We're going to invite the students to this art after school club. But when the student gets there, we're going to talk to them about if they don't feel like a boy today, maybe they're not a boy and you might not be heterosexual. And what we talk about here today, I need you to go home and lie to your mom and don't tell your mom that we were discussing this, like stuff like that. It's predatory. It's groomerish. It's just way too much. It's way too much. So that is some of the stuff that I talk about when I talk about issues under the flag. Okay. Um, but, you know, all this woke and progressive talk in schools, it's just too much. It's too much, in my opinion. Um, they're just pushing. I, I feel like they're really clout chasing, especially as it pertains to um, helping the kids masturbate in the best way possible, like master masturbation. In schools, I feel like they're clout chasing off of the like this society, the moral compass is being diluted. They're clout chasing off of the, the, the degradation of, of today's society, like where we are as a people. The lines in the sand are not apparent anymore. And people can push a boundary. And if they're using a certain vernacular or if they're part of a certain group, if they're a protected class or if they are shown, you know, attention in general in the court of uh, public opinion or the court of law, then the goalpost is just wherever it just so happens to land for that person or that situation. But it's, it's the clout chasing off of being predatory towards children and targeting them in, in a way that sexualizes them and places them in harm's way. It's just not okay. It's a slippery slope. If you talk, let's just keep it a buck. If you're talking about masturbation in school, then you're talking about 
dildos, toys, strap-ons, lubes, fleshlights, like whatever. Everybody just doesn't do it with their hand. And I hate to be graphic like that, but like, come on. Come on. Like that, like that's not cool. That's not cool. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. So um, you know, we get to the point where we got sex ed in the classrooms. Next you'll get a BA and masturbation child. Um, so there's so much that they are taken out of or trying to take out of the classroom while placing things into the classroom. So speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about CRT. They, they're busy trying to take CRT out of the classroom while putting extensive classes on masturbation in for sixth through 12th grade. It's like somebody make it make sense. Somebody make that make sense to me. And, you know, speaking of CRT, let's talk about involuntary relocation. This is something we were talking about last week for sure. A lot of people saw it on the blogs and just in, in the headlines in general. And look, if you haven't already taken a moment to hit the thumbs up button, thank you so much for doing so now. I see there are a couple of people, hey, Astute Queen B, who have come in late. But a lot of people seen in the news cycle last week that there was a group of educators who approached the Texas State Board with the grand idea to replace the word slavery in critical race theory teachings with involuntary relocation. So you know they stole us, right? <laughs> like they stole us, they brought it over here. And instead of them wanting to stick to calling it slavery, they want to try to soften it up. They, they, they want to sugarcoat it to an extent and call it involuntary relocation. And this is the part that gets me like, why not call it slavery? Why not, why not let it be what it is? Because it's harsh. It was oppressive. It was wrong. It was morally corrupt. It was evil. It was cheating. But the fact of the matter is they want to soften it up because they don't want to separate themselves from their grand and great grandfather's racist stance and oppressive actions. They want to continue to have these things transpire and take place that or, or things similar to them, right? Because we know slavery is still here, just not necessarily in a physical sense, not, not, not in this literal sense. But we are definitely slave, slaves to a lot of beliefs that keep us in debt, whether it be morally, financially, or both slaves to name brands and all other types of expectations and things that, that, that really regress us. But nonetheless, if they would keep it as harsh as it was and call it out and say, this was wrong, this was not okay, they would be okay with leaving it as that does slavery sound harsh? Yeah, especially in comparison to involuntary relocation. Like, what are you talking about? But the fact that they don't want to separate, they don't want to denounce their grand and great grandfather's racist and oppressive actions. You know why? Because they share those same thoughts and views. That's why. <laughs> A lot of them are literally because honestly, racism, right? And xenophobia and things like that. That's stuff that's taught. It's taught. It's learned. No one's born just just hating another race or origin or creed or marginalized group of people. That is a behavior or a feeling that's taught. And so that's the reason why they don't want to separate themselves because they share those same thoughts. So instead of denouncing it, calling it wrong, cruel, inhumane, they want to sugarcoat it. They want to soften it up. Oh, it, does, it doesn't sound that bad if we say involuntary relocation. <laughs> so the fact of the matter is at this point, they are realizing they cannot escape CRT. You cannot escape critical race theory. You can't. You can have as many people protest and write these letters and show up to the board and have these Karen meltdowns on the microphones at the PTA meetings. It does not matter. You're not going to be able to escape CRT and all, all that exists there. What your great, great grandpappies and them did to us and what you still desire to do to us today. Even trying to remove it from the curriculum, it makes it more lucrative and it keeps the conversation going. Trust and believe. Anything that you're trying to snatch outside of the view of the public, right? Right. Anything that was ever readily available and you just snatch it and there's this big conversation about it and you create this element of mystique 
We're not making this available anymore. You're not going to be able to find it. It does nothing but double the curiosity. That's just the way humans work. Things that are readily available to you are not as lucrative as things that are available for a limited time or things that have been taken off of the shelf. So it doesn't matter if you take it out of the schools or not. The headlines are flooded with it. People don't, If people don't understand what it is, they understand what it is now because they want to know what the hell are the headlines talking about. They're going to read it and especially the kids. You cannot keep the children from these headlines and from social media and from Instagram and from the blogs. And one thing's for sure and two things for certain is when it comes to all of these urban blogs and all of the things that these Generation Z and everybody after that are on, they're on the shave room, they're on the neighborhood talk, they're on the Jasmine brand and all these, all of them talked about it. And all of them talk about it at least once or more a month. There is no hiding that, right? So you can try and do whatever you want to do, but the more noise you make about trying to take it out of school, the more you're keeping the ripple effect of really letting people know what it is. Exist. You're keeping it loud and strong. So, so fight on, Karen. <laughs> Call the manager. Scream to the top of your lungs, girl. Girl, file the report. <laughs> because CRT is not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. Okay? Long as you know. <laughs> Long as you know. But the, the, the fact of the matter is, right? Let's switch the verbiage. <laughs> Slavery sounds too harsh. <laughs> people who have not, pe people, look, colonizers, they have always whitewashed history and rewrote it to fit their narrative. Rewrote it, rewritten it, whatever the hell. They always going to bend history and write it in a way that fits their narrative while denying the truth. They are not grounded in reality and true history. Let them tell it. They invented cornrows and shit. <laughs> Micro minis. <laughs> the flat iron. <laughs> the afro. Let them tell it. They, they did all that. Okay. In addition to them discovering America. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, I mean, uh, we're really not surprised, but the, the, the great thing about this story is because, again, this was a group of educators who approached the Texas State Board with this grand idea. <laughs> it was rejected. The Texas State Board definitely rejected the proposal and God dang it, thank goodness. Thank goodness. OK, <laughs> it is definitely a bl now, granted, it's just one state in Texas and Florida. Sometimes they can operate as like their own, they own little different entity. OK, because it it, it it be it be going down over there in, in, in Texas and Florida. But, you know, it, it, it's definitely a win in, in the sake of the notion. And CRT, again, like I said, it's not going anywhere. It's not going anywhere. With all that being said, we're talking about CRT. We're talking about black history trying to be erased, the erasure of, of, of black history. And, and just, and some people don't call it black history. They like to call it a black, an interruption to our black history, which, you know, I can agree with that as well. But nonetheless, we talk about black history and it being removed from schools, things that, that, that are really important for students to understand and learn outside of just the fables and the stories that, you know, go from household to household, right? Um, while they trying to put masturbation in and take CRT out, let's get into our Black History moment. Y'all know Black History is so much more than a month. And sometimes, okay, people get caught up on, on this Black day in history, but sometimes history be happen, happening in present day as well. And over here, I do not limit Black history, the celebration, right? And that, and really going over the facts to just, I don't limit that to February because I just don't think it's fair. There's so much more to us. So with all that being said, let's get into our Black History Moment. Speaking about CRT, let's get into this Black History and keep talking about involuntary relocation or AKA slavery. Not that I would ever want to respect it as that, but just wanted to tie in the last story to this Black History moment, okay? Make sure y'all hit thumbs up and put some pancakes in the chat. 
Now let's spend a little bit of time with our ancestors, or at least listening to them. Because you know they always tell us you don't know where you're going unless you know where you came from. So let's get into a little bit of black history with this black history moment. All right, and we're back. Someone said, that's Sister Andrew. You daggone right. I'm going to squeeze Sister Andrew in any time I get. Do you hear me? When I say any time, I do mean any time I get. I'm going to throw me some Sister Andrew Caldwell up in the mix. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway. All right. It's Sister Andrew for you, baby. So let's talk about this. We, we talk about slave work. We're talking about CRT. This was some stuff that I really wanted to discuss um, as it pertains to our history in bondage and slavery, since they want to remove CRT so much. Again, it does nothing but create the ripple effect to keep the conversation going. So one thing, um, um, some data that I found about us, right? <clears throat> And I appreciate data like this because, I mean, we know a lot of the generalizations, but to get actual numbers and things of that nature, it's it's definitely something totally different. Um, so actually, let me just go ahead and put this on the screen for all of us to see, right? So we can see this picture of these children here. To combat the high rate of death among slaves, plantation owners demanded females start having children at 13 years old. And by 20, the enslaved women will become um, expected to have about five children. It says an enslaved woman was a sex tool beneath the level of moral considerations. She was an economic good, useful, in addition to her menial labor for breeding more slaves. To attain that purpose, the master mated her promiscuously according to his breeding plans. So you can see him, you know, buckling up his pants and this picture. The master, his sons, and other members of his family took turns with her to increase the family's fortune and to satisfy his extramarital sexual desires. Guests and neighbors were also invited to this luxury, even it being called a luxury the body of someone else that they are taking without consent is being called a luxury. And they would invite everyone over as if, you know, it was a party. As an inducement, plantation owners promised freedom for enslaved females once she bore 15 kids. Also, the brutal enslavers also castrated Black males and use black females for gynecological research, all while not providing them with anesthesia. J. Morian Sims, the father of modern gynecology, purchased black women slaves and used them as guinea pigs for his untested surgical experiments. This is an infamous picture that a lot of us are familiar with. He repeatedly performed genital surgery on black women without anesthesia because according to him, black women don't feel pain. That's something we know to be so true. You know, a lot of us who have ever had hospital experiences and especially black women who have had hospital childbirth experiences, 
we know sometimes it can be really difficult to get them to understand that we're truly in pain and that we need help. However, you can alleviate this, please do so. And you've even had doctors and that are done where they can prove that um, Black women aren't treated to the same level of respect or pain is it taken as seriously in medical settings as a white woman's is. There's a lot of data to back that. So one of those women was African-American. She was a slave and she was forced to regularly undergo surgical experiments while positioned on Sims table, squatting on all fours and fully awake without the comfort of any anesthesia. Can you imagine genital surgery time and time again with no, no anesthesia? None. Henrietta Lacks too, yeah the disrespect of black bodies. It would be more than appropriate to credit Anarcha, along with other nameless slave women as the mothers of gynecology. Slave masters also had sex farms where they would rape black men, women, and children. The raping of black men was called buck breaking. Marriages among the African slaves were also not recognized by their white enslavers. This, you know, it, it is really difficult to hear um, things as specific as this. And, you know, sometimes just a reminder of how cruel they can get, because, again, we're finding black kids going through neighborhoods on their bikes or in their cars. And you've got, you know, white folks just kind of chasing them out of the neighborhood like back in the day. And it's like, wait a minute, are we moving backwards? Because if we move all the way backwards, this is how far back we're going to go. We still, we barely forward enough to be, you know, you know, really free and, and, and really comfortable. Uh, we still have to be worried about b being stopped at a traffic stop and being shot 60 times. Whereas all white mass murderer can go out here and just off several people and be apprehended without a scratch. No, white is not standard, but we're talking about life or death. We're talking about the clear, the glaring differences in between the way that blacks are treated by police and the way that whites and non-blacks are treated by police. Like, don't play semantics with me when we're talking about something as serious as this. So, you know, while people are scared to, they're scared of the full gut-wrenching truth about about our history and honestly the part that their grandparents have played and the part that they still want to play to systematically harm us over the years they don't want critical race theory in schools because at some point these the, these students you give them enough history they're able to compute a lot of things and, and leave it up to them they'll be able to compute exactly how much we're due reparations and ultimately they they just don't want to continue to educate people on this because not only are there going to be reparations that we continue to demand, there's also going to be another uprising, uh, uh, something worse than what happened around the height of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor. There's going to be something worse. There's going to be something worse. <laughs> For sure. There's going to be something worse. So, you know, also... Um, you know, th this is just the, the typical history to them trying to control our bodies. Roe versus Wade passed. However you feel about it, even if you feel like, no, you know, even if you're anti-abortion, right, under any circumstance, it, it, that fundamentally, this is still white men in particular, their obsession with trying to control our bodies. That's just what it is. Thank you so much, Sunstar, for the 999 Super Chat. I appreciate it. It says, appreciate this powerfully informative Black history. I, thank you so much. I try my best. It, you know, y'all know. I hope y'all couldn't hear that. <laughs> y'all know I'm passionate about the Black history and really tying it into what's going on today because history does nothing but repeat itself. And there are always parallels between then and now, although it may not be as worse. Things are just different. You know, our parents didn't have to worry about racism or social media or computers because they didn't have it. You know, so the difference is we're, we're experiencing racism in a lot of different, you know, micro ways that just the, the microaggressions have just transformed. That's all. And some of them are more major than anything. Um, 
but this this is what happened in in the civilized free world when we talk about the way that black women were taken and used as cat breeding cattle of some sort this was a civilized world the abuse our ancestors had to endure it was gruesome at that point in time you have you know 20 babies you can be free you know we're, we're more of numbers than anything i mean we're still numbers to the government right some people would say hell we're slaves to the government our barcode is our social right you have some people that get down like that but everybody's entitled to their own opinion but um you know Slavery isn't always being wrapped up with a, a a ball and chain, right? Sweatshops are called sweatshops because sometimes they're treated like slaves and they're very much underpaid and exploited. And that's that's basically what slavery was, is being exploited and definitely not being treated or paid what you are worth. Um, but the idea of Blacks having five plus kids, is it, would you say it was forced upon us? Like it was just... It, your, your goal was that you had to have as many kids as possible back in that time if you wanted to survive or be seen as a valuable member of society. So at that point, with the hypersexuality at some point, you know, people do ad adapt to their environment at and, and one point or another, right? And so they were hypersexual without a choice at that time back during slavery. And then we fast forward to now, listen, I'm not excusing people who just want to be out here being promiscuous without taking any caution. But the hypersexuality was definitely something that was forced upon us at that time. And you can't think that at some point um, that that didn't follow us. Most of the stuff that starts off very miserable to you, you start to normalize it in certain different ways because you start playing psychological games with yourself as to how can I keep this up without seeing it as a bad thing for me. A lot of times people flip a negative and turn it into a positive. Like, okay, well, then this is what I got to do. Well, then I'm going to find a way to enjoy this, like whatever the case is. So, you know, the idea of Blacks having multiple children, that was definitely a, an idea that was forced upon us and, and drilled in early. You think about how many brothers and sisters your grand and great grandmother or father had. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot you know so um I, like i said history repeats itself over and over again i just want to know what's it going to take for us black people to get out of this this oppressive cycle we talk about crt we we go back and we look at how our bodies were treated and controlled by white men back in that time and then we look and we kind of see the parallel perhaps and we talk about Roe versus Wade, like what, what are we going to do? And I implore you to comment because I, I don't have a definitive answer, right? I feel like a lot of us are just kind of like lost. Like, what do we do to get out of this cycle? Even outside of just the sexual, you know, the sexualization um, and, and exploitation of our body, right? And the loss of consent. Like, what, what are we going to do? Are we going to put money back into the hood? I, I saw that Dana with the data had a video before I went live today about um, should when you become wealthy, should you by default or, or something of that nature, I'm paraphrasing, automatically like put money back into the hood to help out um, lower privileged neighborhoods and things of that nature. I, I, I just don't know. Like what is the collective solution, right? Like how can we all do our part to really escape this and will it take an insurrection or I'm sorry, will it take another racial uprising in order for us to get there? You know, MLK was, let's peaceful, let's march. Um, Malcolm X was like, by any means necessary. The Black Panthers was like, by any means necessary. You know, playing nice, like what is that gonna do for us? What's that going to do for us? I mean, even if we just, let's just slant this politically again, right? Towards the beginning of the video, once more, right? Tierra Mack is a Democrat twerking for votes who wants to introduce a bill that allows teachers in school to teach their 6th through 12th grade students how to masturbate. She's a Democrat. I saw a tweet online that stated, 
Republicans are the Uvalde school shooter and Democrats are the Uvalde police and how they responded to that situation. Think about that for a second. Think about how weak the Democrats be looking and being and how aggressive the Republicans are. And think about how the Uvalde police literally just stood and watched all those children be slaughtered while they had the tools that they needed to protect and go in and intervene and do their goddamn jobs. While the shooter <laughs> represents Republicans in this scenario, Democrats just be sitting there watching. Like, they, they just be doing a lot of dumbness. And while both sides got their faults, I'm just like, listen, I, I wouldn't be able to commit and call myself either one because both of them are just bananas. But I can say Democrats be mad weak. Do something. Like, <laughs> like that be the thing. Republicans playing dirty as a mug and here go Democrats. We're just going to, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to try to play it right. And we're going to, it just, it's not, it just, it just don't be given. Like, what are we going to, like, what are Democrats going to, okay, Democrats, they, they voted for Joe Biden. Like I said, I'm not either because I, I just can't give it either side. I, both of them got their dirt, like independent for me, right? <laughs> I'm more focused on who I'm voting on locally because I understand that means more, although I vote for both. Get it together. Two wings, same bird. Exactly. Same bird. They both do their dirt, right? But Democrats just stand and watch. They 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 be talked. The Republicans get together and they do. White power. Da, da, da. Democrats be over here like, oh my God, I can't believe this. Every year. No plan. Oh my God, I can't believe this. We're gonna, we're gonna talk about implementing some stuff. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> I can't with them. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's just what I think. But look, Stickies, let me know what y'all think about that down below in the comments. Um, let's move on to the next, next subject, okay? We're going to move on to the next thing. Again, if you haven't already taken a moment to hit that thumbs up button, I don't know what you're waiting for, but please make sure you do it. Okay. So let's get into the next thing that we want to discuss today. And you know what? Let, let's just bring it down because we got into a lot of serious stuff, okay? Let's get this bus rolling on something that's, that's, that's a bit more light, okay? We're going to talk about Ray J and this tattoo. Ray J and this tattoo. Have y'all have y'all seen this tattoo that Ray J got of his sister? You guys, who is this? This is supposed to be Brandy's brother's sister. This is supposed to be Brandy's brother's sister. Who is this? Who? This look like Brandy didn't serve some hard time. This look like Lil Wayne. Why is her eyes red? Why does she got all these tattoos? Why she look like she a part of a gang? I just know she didn't approve this. I know she didn't approve this, Rachel. On his leg. On his leg. I'm like, the least you could do. Listen, it, you're not getting a tattoo of a dead person, right? You're getting a tattoo of a, a, a woman that's your sister that's very much alive and well. So why wouldn't you get her to approve her portrait? This is crazy. I know she's not satisfied. They said she looked like she drank a three liter of Pepsi nonstop. <laughs> not to Brandy 6 9 Oh my gosh. I just can't. I just can't. I, like, does he hate her? Does he hate her? 
What's going on? Did he do this after the verses? Yeah, he did this after the verses. He just did it. It said, nigga, hit him. exactly. Things like this make me wonder about Ray J. Because, you know, Ray J, he, listen, he is funny. He is charming. Don't get me wrong. He's an excellent businessman. And um, you, <laughs> he's just naturally funny because he goofy. And he don't mind being the butt of the joke sometimes. And it's sometimes that quirky sense of humor that makes him such a good salesperson. Um, but he's kind of like your homegirl next door, her annoying little brother. But he just show up and he be funny. Um, but also annoying. And I just don't. It makes me wonder about him because I could definitely tell before he was on a little. He was on the slopes, okay? He was riding that white horse, you know? They call it booger sugar. They call it booger sugar. Booger sugar. They call it booger sugar. Ow. Yeah, he was on that. And so times like this, I'll be wondering if he's still on it. I'm wondering if he's still on it. Some people say it's creepy. Yeah, I absolutely find it to be creepy. It's creepy without a doubt. Ray J's a weirdo. He's a little off of shore. <laughs> Not homage to the walking dead. Oh my God. Wait. <laughs> Child. Because he is. Always laughing with Ray J. Exactly. Not always laughing with Ray J. Laughing at him. That, that'd be the thing. And I, I think he know it a lot of times. But yeah, this, this tattoo out of line. I need him to get it together. Some people said it looked like Erica Badu too. I think it was a strip down the middle of the lip. Um, but he's really out of pocket. I swear. I hope that that's henna or something fake. I hope he was trolling for the blogs because let me tell you something right here. That's not it. Okay. It's, it's not it. They said, what's that coming out of her mouth? It's lip paint child. They said that baking soda. Maybe she is high. Maybe they smoked together and he wanted to, I don't know, but she looked like she about to come out and be like, what's up, that say? Wanna know where you been, that say? I ain't seen what no I say, you know? You know how some things the guys be down at the block? They be down at the block running it, you know what I mean? They got a couple of teardrops. That's what it look like is going on right here. Huh? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. They look like they do graffiti real well. <laughs> fix it Jesus please <laughs> fix it please and let's get into the next thing child we need to talk about Macy Gray because I gotta get Ray J out of here because he he's enough to he is funny though his breakfast club interviews are so funny watching him do pitches for his different products the Scooties, the Raycon um, earbuds the glasses um, what else was it? He, he's done quite a few things. He's, he's a good businessman, but shall he, he's definitely a little annoying. Definitely a little annoying, but it's cool. It's cool. He's not bad looking, but I, I just don't know how Princess do it. I really don't know how Princess does it. Ah, uh, yeah. I just don't get that. Mm -mm. Uh, beautiful gowns. Beautiful gowns. Moving on, okay? If you haven't already taken a moment to hit the thumbs up button, make sure you do so. But also make sure y'all subscribe, okay? I'm rolling through these topics. If you appreciate the way that I present information, definitely make sure you don't hesitate by hitting the thumbs up button, but also tap on that notification bell because you don't want to miss when this bus be skirt, skirting up through your neighborhood. Now let's talk about Macy Gray, right? I brought her up in the beginning of the video because look, I feel like Macy Gray deserves to be talked about. She went viral this week. The girls gave her hell. The girls wanted to tussle. They gave her hell. She pretty much expected it, though. But um, she started getting death threats and all other types of stuff. So uh, she definitely caught some scathing heat. And I want to talk about it. And also, I'm open to see what you all think about it as well. So let's get into it. Hey, roll us on your wrist with plain giant. All right, so let's talk about Macy Gray. What I'm going to do is I'm going to refresh this so we can hear her exact sentiment. Many of you have already heard Macy Gray's sentiment. What I want to know from you as we watch this clip and I go over it with a few who may not be familiar, 
Um, let me know if you agree or you disagree. Do you feel like Macy Gray was right? Was she being truthful? Was she speaking fact? Or do you feel like she was dead wrong? Or do you feel like she was out of pocket? Okay, let's take a listen. You're gonna hate me, but as a woman, I will say this and everybody's gonna hate me, but as a woman, just because you go change your plots doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. You feel that? I know that for a fact. Mm. Like, if you want me to call you a her, I will, because that's what you want. But that doesn't make you a woman just because I call you a her and just because you got a surgery. Because people do feel, feel that you, there's biological sex and then there's gender identity, that you right. can identify as whatever you like you in terms of a gender, want, right? Yeah, that's totally. the freedom we live in. Absolutely. But actually, you can't change the mechanics of biological sex. They are what they are. Well, just every, like women go through just a, a completely unique experience that, and, and, and surgery or, or, you know, finding yourself doesn't, doesn't change that. You know, being a, a little girl is, is a whole epic book, you know, and, and you, can't, you can't have that just because you want to be a woman. I will say this and everybody's going to hate me, but as a okay. woman... Just because you go change your plots doesn't make you old. So this is a pretty interesting story. There have been a few twists and turns. Um, now, look, Macy Gray has come out. She has a, there have been headlines, right? A headline that Macy Gray, um, that she apologized, right? I personally don't think that Macy Gray said anything wrong. I don't. I don't feel like she said anything wrong. Um, nor was she attempting to be malicious. When you look at, you look, listen to her tone, you're looking at her body language, her demeanor and all that other stuff. Um, but she did get a lot of, a lot of backlash. She got a lot of backlash. Um, and I see a lot of people in the chat say she didn't do anything wrong. Okay. So let's get into this headline that I seen that said, that she apologized, right? So it says, Macy Gray apologized for alleged transphobic comments. She says, I have nothing but love for the LGBTQ plus community. It says, Macy Gray is apologizing for comments that had critics accusing her of being transphobic. Quote, I have nothing but love for the LGBTQ plus and transgender community and have been a supporter since day one. My statement on Pierre's Morgan was grossly misunderstood. I don't hate anyone. I respect everyone's right to feel comfortable in their bodies and live in their own truth, end quote. This publication goes on to say the apology comes one day after the soul singer appeared on Pierre's Morgan. Now, mind you, this isn't an apology. This isn't an apology. But also, I don't feel like she did anything wrong, and I don't feel like there's anything for her to apologize for. And nowhere there did she say, I'm sorry. She did reinforce the fact that I don't mean any harm. <laughs> I, I don't have a problem with them. Um, I have nothing but love for them. But... She didn't apologize, but I, I, I don't know if some of the blogs wanted to frame it that way. Um, I'm not sure. I saw ET Entertainment Tonight titled their uh, article that way. And as I checked the article before I went live, they changed the headline. So what I do want to get into is a transgender who spoke out in support of Macy Gray. And that is Flame Monroe. Flame Monroe is a transgender comedian. And the support that she showed, uh, Macy Gray, it was breathtaking. And I really enjoyed it. It was refreshing. Good evening, everyone. My name is comedian Flame Monroe. I am a transgender woman or person, however you describe it. And this message is directly for Macy Gray. Macy Gray. I want to tell you out the words of my mouth from my portion of the LGBTQIA plus community that I wholeheartedly support you and thank you for seeing the real world for what it is. I do not believe that you are transphobic or homophobic or any other kind of phobic. I believe that you know science and biology because here are the three things. 
Gender is a fact. Identity is how you feel and sexuality is your desire. And you are absolutely right because until you have the heart and mind of a woman, I don't believe that you could ever possibly be a biological woman. Trans women are trans women. Trans men are trans men. Women are women and men are men. It is as simple as that. There shouldn't be any argument about this because here's Roll us on your wrist plain giant. All right. Now that is what Flame Monroe had to say about the discussion. I appreciate Flame stepping up. Let's see. We have a comment from Cram that voice lessons. It says she shouldn't be getting death threats, but this is not the most advanced discussion of the topic. Let me see another comment that Cram left. It's sort of like the people that say Black Lives Matter think their lives matter more. But a lot of us aren't saying that, though. It's almost maliciously misses the point. Mm, I think that allows me to I, You know, I don't agree with that. And I do appreciate your presence, right? You know, I always do. You know, we be talking behind the scenes. And I appreciate your presence as a representation of the LGBT community. But, <clears throat> you know, I don't agree. I don't feel like there's anything malicious about missing the point. When it comes to trans women you know specifically they are in their own unique lane of their own and it, it, it's almost as if people who were assigned female at birth right cishet women if i'm using that, that that terminology correctly we are ashamed out of saying you're not a natural born woman. And, and I mean, if, 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 if some people feel like, duh, we know that I've seen a couple, you know, remarks, duh, we know that it, you know, so then why is it so offensive when I affirm that you are not what I am like, you know, and, and, and again, I'm not saying I'm about to misgender you. If your pronouns are she and her or, or even they, Listen, I will refer to you as that, you know, but sometimes it's like natural born woman. It, we, we get down to the chest feeding and, oh, that's offensive to transgender women if you say breastfeeding. So how about you call it? Like it gets to the point where we become uncomfortable within our own group and it can get kind of sickening at, at a point trying to censor yourself to that magnitude without being able to call out. That like, just because you, you know, and, and sometimes they, and, and I'm not, we're not talking about like picking on the trans women who are literally, or the trans people in general, who are literally just trying to survive. We're not talking about like making them uncomfortable, but sometimes these conversations come up and some would even say Macy was baited into this, the way that she addressed it, right? That Pierre did, and I wouldn't put it past him, but you know, sometimes these conversations might come up in. Um, if, if we're talking about like bathroom usage, you know, I do my show issues under the flag and the high school girls, they don't want to, you know, feel pressured into or obligated to use the bathroom with, uh, you know, a high schooler who was assigned male at birth, who now considers himself to be, a, you know, a woman, you know. And no, don't nobody feel like getting into a debate about what parts you had and what parts you didn't have. But, you know, if you if you, if you want or if you need your own bathroom, then, you know, we can be advocating for that. Um, We can be advocating for that. The people really um got under, and I'm going to keep looking through the comments in a second. I just wanted to get into what Macy had to say. Macy Gray, this is Macy Gray's actual uh, Instagram, it says, all of you coming on my page, threatening me and calling me names, just because I said something you don't agree with, be whatever you want to be and flow off. I said, okay, Macy. Okay, Macy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm glad she didn't apologize. I don't know. Uh, why the blog labeled it as if she apologized. I guess I guess if it made some people feel better to say, yeah, we got her to fold or we got her to address us again um, or, or whatever the case is. Like, I just... It's just too much. It's just too much. 
that's why I said almost maliciously. It's like when people state that black women aren't the preference. Many black women already know and don't need to hear it constantly. That's true. That's true. Like, I, I you know, I totally understand like that parallel. And I understand if, if trans women don't want to hear it constantly, you know, but, you know, we catch these conversations being viral because there's a lot going on in, in today's society in the headlines. Like everyone had to talk about, right? If you talk about the news, like Leah Thomas, you know, and it becomes a discussion because it's not even just something you see on TV anymore. It affects if you go to a certain school, you know, a school that has someone or, or whatever the case is, you know, Leah Thomas, a trans woman who was born with a certain amount of testosterone and, and a certain advantage over the women that he played alongside with in women's sports. That's just not fair. And a prime example of just how it works even outside of that situation, it's very similar, is the women who were on the team with Leah Thomas before they decided to say, no, you can't play with these women because you have an unfair advantage. If they spoke up about it, it was like, oh, well, we're going to put you in counseling because you're clearly phobic or you're having thoughts that are harmful to other people. So they basically deemed you, you, you won't find any women who are willing to show face and talk about how they had to really bring that to the higher ups attention to mention how unfair that was because they were shamed and shunned and they had a whole, a whole system of people. The checks and balances was all corrupt because it was like, well, okay, if, if this person thinks that I'm wrong for stating the obvious, who else can I go to and get fairness for my sport? Like any woman that plays sport, that is your sport. It's yours. It belongs to you. It belongs to you. And you have the right to play tug of war with that shit. When somebody walks up with an unfair advantage, some shit that none of y'all on that team was born with and, and tries to compete next to you and say, no, you're just going to have to get with it. And if you don't get with it, you're phobic. Like absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, the whole chest feeding argument is like really, really a thing. You had like national health care um, putting data out about it and how offensive it could be to um, transgender men who could still become pregnant, although their pronouns were he and him and they were a trans man. You know, such a small population of people. And not to say that we should just like write them out because they're a small population, but you mean to tell me every woman that exists has to change their vernacular like or their vocabulary and stop saying breast, something that we are born with to say chest for the, for the men who can have children? Like that's bananas. You know, but the moment you speak out about it, they want to phobic, 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 phobic. Like, I just don't think that that's cool. I just don't think that that's cool. Lots of trans women know and understand that there are important differences between trans and cis women. Some do have the game, but can you imagine it getting tiring to be told all the time? I could imagine it, it being tiring to be told all the time you know, and, and, you know, sometimes us natural born women, we, we get tired of, you know, we, there are elements, um, you know, from that side, they get tiring to us too. And, you know, sometimes we get firm. I'm not standing by any legit um, homophobia, any hate going anywhere, anybody just trying to like heckle a trans woman trying to survive. Like, I'm not standing by anything like that. By no means, but you know, we're just stating the obvious, like, hey, like, you know, if there if I go to church or if I like work at the you know, super work at wherever, and I gotta deal with like full blown men who consider themselves to be women, you know what I'm saying, or trans women in the bathroom, and I'm not allowed to say anything because I'm afraid of how they may put it to HR, like I'm not dealing with that. Like, I'm not, you know, like, you're afraid to say anything at all. Because even when you say it right, Macy Gray clearly didn't mean any harm. And like Flame Monroe says, she understands science. 
So why should she have to face all this scrutiny and come out with a secondary statement to help alleviate some stuff? Like it's, it's just too much. It's just too much. And I just, Black folk are still not a protected class. So the prioritization of, of, of how, you know, rights are distributed, it's just mind blowing to me. It's mind blowing to me. I don't know. So it, it's, yeah. Yeah, I definitely have words for how some Trans women got it twisted, but they're a loud minority. Meanwhile, trans women out here getting murdered. And and that's true. And and that is not anything, you know, the violence. I would never advocate. I'm talking about us basically trying to go to the bathroom. You know, us, you know, certain sports and, and facilities and things like that. I, again, I, I would never advocate the heck. Mind, people mind their business. Mind, like, mind your business. <laughs> I'm not advocating that. I'm just, you know. You know, you'll you'll find masculine women acting like a man sometimes, and men will be like, "Yo, you're not a man." And women don't be really trying to bounce back on that. They just be like, "You know what? I'm not. <laughs> like, I'm not. Like, re regardless of what what the masculine aspect is that they mention." So you know, I you know, common sense hurts people so bad sometimes. Um. Yeah, that's all I can say. That's all I can say. Um, but nonetheless, look, Macy Gray girl, she don't be bothering nobody. I saw that she did some charity work, as a matter of fact. I said, Macy Gray don't bother nobody. She out here and, you know, Macy Gray is, she's all the way her. I mean, all the way, all the way, just like her own person. It's like she almost every role she plays, she basically kind of plays herself. Okay. So I seen this earlier. It was a stupid ad. Macy Gray ramps up the My Good nonprofit to help victims of police brutality. So she explains her vision for the organization and why financial and mental health services are so important for families who suffer the loss of a loved one. So, you know, Macy Gray don't be, you know, trying to hurt nobody. And, you know, we live in such a PC society, even outside of the... Um, Damn, I just lost my thought in the middle of that sentence. Okay, so we live in such a PC society that even outside of talking about the LGBTQ community, we be talking about anything else, and there's just always some, oh, can't say that, can't say this, can't say that, can't. Child, at, at some point or another, we're not going to be able to say anything. We're not even going to be able to call people who eat their boogies weird. We're not going to be able to say any of that stuff because every single thing is going to be offensive um, I told this girl nice vocab. I told Red Wig earlier today. I told her she had a nice vocabulary. I said nice vocab though. She said, "And you're anti-intellectual." I'm like, "Girl, I wasn't being sarcastic. You clearly have a, a decent vocabulary. You just don't use words right." She called me anti. Um, she called me anti-intellectual because I told her she has a nice vocabulary. Um, so there are just a lot of problems that don't even exist. A, a lot of words that don't even exist. That people people is just going to make a thing <laughs> people are just going to make a thing king roman news thank you so much for stopping and y'all make sure y'all subscribe to king roman news if you haven't already um says as a man i would be offended if a trans man said to me you can't be more of a man than me yeah exactly <laughs> like it you know it it's 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 common sense <laughs> I'm still upset about this. But yeah, I just, especially because that's something from the UK. If the UK isn't willing to trade off with the words that they use, specifically what they call a cigarette, the UK literally calls cigarettes fags, but they want us to stop using spaz because in the UK, it's something offensive. But if you call it a cigarette a fag, then do you understand how offensive that is to us? Like, come on now. The UK is wild with that. Um, But... Yeah, you know, women can't even, you know, stand strong in that womanhood and say, like, without people taking offense. I, I just can't. And, like, uh, we respect men. You know what I'm saying? Like, we respect men, what they are, who they are, 
And then you have people who weren't assigned women at birth who want to make us cowardice out of our own stance about ourselves and about our own group that we were literally born into. We're supposed to cower down and, and soften our words to spare their feelings as they try to um, consider themselves to be equal to us. And they're not. They're the, they, they are their own unique entity. And I have respect for them. But I mean, no, I'm, I'm going to speak about, I'm going to speak about my group, my group of people. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, what is wrong with y'all? <laughs> like, I don't know. Everything is not phobic. I don't have a problem with who you sleep with, what you wear. It ain't me. I ain't got a problem with it. Unless you interested in kids, I ain't got a problem with it. If you interested in kids, I'm going to drag you because you a pedophile. If not, I don't care if you sleeping with the rooster next door. I promise you I don't. I promise you I don't. Now, if it, if it was my rooster, though, wait a minute. If it was my rooster, if it was my rooster, I'd have a problem. Speaking of roosters, speaking of roosters, Let's get into a little something, something. And shout out to all 130 of us here. Make sure y'all hit that thumbs up button. If you have not already, pay your fare because it's free. Okay? Hey, Flyer Storm. Pay your fare. It's free. Okay? Thank you for the super chats. If you want to send the cash app, the, the cash app is wide open for you, baby. Because <laughs> YouTube ain't going to be messing with this video. I done cut up a little bit too much. Nonetheless, this is one of the funniest clips that I've seen the whole 4th of July weekend. Okay? Let's get into this real quick. The one day when Nick says the rooster followed him and attacked him. His neck flares up and he's doing his thing and he's trying to jump up at me. He was trying to get the animal away. And I tried to hit it, but the chicken's jumping up at me and I accidentally knocked it in the head. You know, call it a lucky shot, whatever. But when Dave Felice came home, all he saw was his rooster dead in a ditch. I said, I'm calling JSO. I called JSO. JSO didn't do nothing. And then a couple of days later, I, I realized I could call animal control. And in late June, James Nix went to jail for animal cruelty. Next thing you know, he calls the chicken police on me. While the neighbors continue the fight, Nick says he never should have been arrested. Chickens are dying every day, people, at churches, Popeyes, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> really. But one day when Nick says the rooster followed him and attacked him. was <laughs> Nick? And in late June, James Nix went to jail for animal cruelty. Next thing you know, he calls the chicken police on me. While the neighbors continue the fight, Nick says he never should have been arrested. Chickens are dying every day, people, at churches, Popeyes, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really? But one day when Nick <laughs> says the roof... And Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really? That ain't right. He was acting in self-defense. That is not right. <laughs> it's not right, but it's so. No, for real. That's really not right. The chicken was clearly in attack mode. He was sticking his. <laughs> you know, it's a whole eight minute interview of this. This was just 40 seconds. It's a whole eight minutes of this comedy, y'all. It really, it really is. <laughs> and these neighbors live about this far from one another and they fussing. Because he hit his his rooster that attacked people. <laughs> he called the chicken police, not the chicken police. You know, Peter really be overstepping their bounds. Yo, they care more about these animals than they care about people. I'm telling you, it's the truth. That ain't right. A chicken dying every day, people. <laughs> Kentucky Fried Chicken, really. <laughs> Churches, not churches, because I, Billy, I know your church ain't cooking no goddamn chicken, Billy. Billy, tell the truth and shame the devil. Is it baked? Bob, B Bob, William, stop playing with me. <laughs> Chickens every day, B. No, he shouldn't have had that wild rooster outside like that. I'm on Billy Bob's side, man. F all the noise, man. He, he, he shouldn't have had that thing out there like that. <laughs> Chickens dying every day. You hear me? 
You hear me? <laughs> the chicken police. <laughs> the no, the news do know exactly who to interview. That was funny right there. That was funny. The regular police ain't do nothing. And the chicken, the chicken police didn't. Where is Colonel Sanders when you need him? I saw the Lifetime movie. I know he's still fit enough to wrestle him down. Listen, Purdue, Purdue is is loud and out there. You hear me? You hear me? <laughs> Chickens die every day, people. It's a whole it's a whole eight minute interview. I implore y'all to really find that thing. I should have found it for y'all, but see, I ain't gonna get a copyright strike for the whole eight minutes. Forty seconds, I'm good to go. Listen, I told y'all we gonna get into the viral stuff. This this is some viral stuff going on online. We 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 done popped through all of the neighborhoods this evening. We took it from, we took it from twerking Tierra Mac. We took it from twerking on Capitol Hill or on the beach. We took it from Lord have mercy, not masturbation in schools. We took it to, to CRT. We took it to to involuntary relocation, slavery. We we got some black history up in there. Macy Gray, Ray J. This is a very well-rounded bus ride that I not take y'all through the neighborhood. They said, knock if you buck, okay? Knock if you buck, boy. Listen, it be like that. It be like that. That that literally the funniest clip that I've seen all 4th of July weekend had me hooting and hollering, hollering and hooting, okay? Look, here's what I know. I, 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 here's what I want to know from y'all, okay? And I know y'all done already hit the thumbs up button, okay? So thank you for that. Thank you for subscribing. But I want to know your final thoughts and unanswered questions. And I'll share mine. I will share my final thoughts and unanswered questions while you comment yours down below in the chat or in the comment section if you are chasing behind us, watching the replay. What are your thoughts about Tierra Mac and the bill she's attempting to introduce to these schools? Y'all know I went through them documents, okay? And it's quite alarming. It's quite alarming, okay? Do you think that masturbation is something that should be taught in schools? Or do you think it should be taught at home? How do you think Macy Gray's sentiments on trans women, how do, how do they actually land for you? And do you think the backlash was warranted or no? Okay. They said doo-doo brown stain Mac. Oh my gosh. Yes, you do got that birthmark back there. <laughs> Chickens die every day, people. Okay. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Y'all know I got a sticky note for you all. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thank my channel members and shout out to all my channel members because you know that three of you are going to win Beyonce boxes. When Beyonce dropped the Beyonce boxes some weeks ago, I went ahead and I purchased four of them. One is for me. The other three I'm giving away to channel members. So shout out to my channel members. But just so I can thank you, I want to play this, this little commercial that I made for y'all. Just to thank you for being a part of the channel. So do me a favor, drop some pancakes down below in the chat. Even if you aren't a channel member, but if you are a channel member, drop some pancakes and use your special emojis. We're going to be right back with the sticky note and then we're going to wrap this joint up, okay? The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black. And she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? So wait a minute, you ain't joined the channel yet so that you can access special perks over here with the plainest Jane? Hey, roll us on your wrist with plain Jane. Ooh, watch this. Hey, I'm the plainest Jane. I'm a cultural commentator and informant, and I provide sticky coverage on trending stories, black news, black culture, and everyday topics with a sticky abstract perspective. <laughs> so get familiar with the perks. I've carefully curated all of these things and it's just a little exclusive glaze to amplify the way that you express yourself. <laughs> so get comfortable, get used to our official emoji over here that is the pancake stack because it's always sticky in Hollywood and in real life and especially when you spend the time over here with the plainest Jane. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the exclusive glaze that I've provided for you to amplify the way you express yourself and I hope you enjoy the digital vibe.
Hey, listen, I always want you to keep it sticky, but be sure to think critically and independently, regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else. But most importantly, I hope that you're feeling all right, and hopefully you've had some time to tackle some of your invisible problems. I know I got a couple of new subscribers, and I just want to say thank y'all. I really do appreciate you. And if you're not quite feeling all right, this channel right here, once you join, it's going to help you kick back and decompress always, but it'll also keep you in the know with what's happening with the best black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So again, get comfortable. The first drink is on me, I right? Act like you got some sense, and I'll see you around. But don't forget to keep it sticky 24-7 by following me on Instagram, but hit that notification bell so that you always know when I upload and you get your dose of syrup first. Now with all that stickiness being said, the most important thing I want you to remember about this neck of the woods and the plainest Jane is Black Lives Matter. And if you don't agree, buy pumpkin, buy pumpkin. Take you out! I don't play that shit. Now you gotta go for real. It's just that simple. <laughs> hey, look, whether you join or not, I do want you to stay beautiful, black, and blessed, and just know I appreciate your support. I'm your girl, the plainest Jane, and let's see what's happening in these virtual streets. You ready? Mm. All right, now <laughs> this will be a crazy ride. I'm warning you now. And we are back, okay? Thank you all so much for being here. Let's go right ahead and get into the sticky note so I can go ahead and eat my dinner, okay? I got some fried shrimp waiting for me fresh out the air fryer, <clears throat> okay? I'm anxious. I skipped out on that meal so I could give y'all a good show full of energy instead of me falling victim to the itis like I always do. <laughs> I literally always fall victim to the itis still, so. I'm glad I went ahead and skipped that meal, but it's going to be real good. But nonetheless, let's get into the sticky note. Y'all know the sticky note are the most important thing of the day that I want to leave you with, but they are the motivational quotes that I craft myself, not taken from no website, no positive quote, blog, or page, or anything of that nature. So let's get it. following video is broadcasting live, and thank you for being my studio audience. Thank you for hitting thumbs up and subscribing to my channel for more Black news, celebrity entertainment, and a splash of controversy. So, you know, I always, I'm always telling you, Stickies, about how life is all about balance and your words are an extension of your thoughts. So as you transform your thoughts into words, you are amplifying all things associated with them. So it's important to at least consider creating limits with how long you allow yourself to complain. And even how often you allow others to complain. You know what I'm saying? If you have a limit to how long you are going to complain, you realize the energy associated with complaining. And again, it's all about ratios. Not to say you can't ever have a moment where you vent to others or even yourself. Sometimes I'll sit in the car and I'll give myself just five minutes to just vent fresh off of work. But then I create a cutoff limit with it. Because why should I, let's just say I spend an hour a, a day venting about positive to negative things, but I spend 50 minutes venting about negativity and only 10 minutes talking about positivity. I'm not really creating much balance there. And again, words are an extension of your thoughts. They ultimately become your reality and they become your world. So if you don't create a limit and try to at least create balance, I make sure my, nine times out of 10, when I'm asking for a manager at a restaurant, I'm giving a, compl a, a, a compliment. I was just at Friday's, I think Saturday, Sunday, one of them days. And I asked for the manager because I got amazing service. Like if you find yourself complaining more than you actually are talking about positivity, it's time for you to realize how you need to recalibrate and maybe change the, the energy that is directly associated with you in the way that you interact with, with the universe, let alone yourself and whatever you're trying to manifest around you. You know, you have the power to change so much within your orbit. So spending time articulating and breathing life into positive thoughts and ideas rather than prioritizing negative ones is something that's really imperative. If, if you care to create actionable steps to creating the balance that you seek in life, because I think everybody would agree that balance is something that is very necessary in life. But a lot of people don't have actionable steps of how to get there. You have to create cutoff limits with yourself. 
You have to catch yourself in real time slipping. You have to do enough reflection to understand when you are slipping on the back end after something has happened so that you can catch yourself next time you in the middle of rolling down that hill. Hit the brakes. Implement something more positive to offset the negativity that lingers. It, it takes work to actually be positive and manifest and affirm the positive things that you desire to happen in your life and in your word. And positive thoughts are literal magnets for more of the same energy. So when I say your words are an extension of your thoughts and your thoughts become your world and they become your reality, I mean that. As you transform your thoughts into words, you are amplifying all things associated with them. So Stickies, I implore you to create cutoff limits with how often you will allow yourself to complain and how long you will allow others to complain to you. Sometimes you have to hold yourself and others to a standard. Okay, I'm going to listen to you complain this one time. I'm going to listen to you complain maybe a second time. The third time you come to me complaining about the same thing, I want to hear you talk about solutions. Because how long are we just going to keep complaining about the same thing over and over and over again? How long? And that's something you can hold yourself and others to at the same time. When I hear myself complaining about the same problem day after day after day, I got to sit back and get quiet and try to manifest some solutions. Is this something that I really have to tolerate every day? Can I be handling this in a different way? It's not as bothersome to me. Can I propose a solution to the person, the thing, the variable that is bothering me so? How can I let them know or break something down to them via body language, words? How can I avoid them or that if possible? You know, that's your sticky note of today. Positive words are literal magnets for more of the same energy. Stop creating unnecessary extensions of negative shit. And that's not toxic positivity it's a matter of understanding the power of the, the power of your tongue and how you can manifest the energy around you okay so that's today's sticky note and hopefully it resonated with you okay if it did be sure to comment down below i'm doing me so i know it's real <laughs> um let me know if you've had any experience with with you know yourself or other people who have complained too much um, I have some, some periods and sometimes where I realize, you know what, I've been doing a lot of complaining and sometimes I catch myself early when the imbalance is very small and sometimes the scale is way like this. And I'm like, whoa, and I really hit the brakes and I really have to recalibrate because the stuff that you put energy, energy into, that's, what's going to multiply. It's going to keep multiplying like rapid fire. And if you are dedicated to complaining to your homegirl every day for two hours on the phone, every day, you're codependent on somebody listening to you bitch and moan for two hours, even one hour a day, and you realize you ain't spent no time talking about, you know what, I'm not going to keep tolerating this. I'm going to change it. I don't have to deal with this. There's a better way I could be dealing with this. You know, you, you got to look in the mirror and realize sometimes you're the problem. You do. <laughs> so um, that's today's sticky note. Y'all know the sticky notes come from my own personal experiences. Sometimes they come from something I'm actually going and working through within that week. Sometimes I'm looking back in my diary, looking back in my journal, and I'm looking at old, old lessons and old things that I've written myself, old motivational notes I've written myself. And I'm publishing those and really studying them. Because sometimes we work through certain problems, whether they had been five months ago or five years ago, and we forget how we got through it. And sometimes just studying up on old solutions that you found within yourself, right? Old solutions that you have formulated to get past former problems. It'll help you if you, you're going through it recently or when you come across it again, study your own personalized data. Study your own, because sometimes getting advice from other people, it don't work. It's based on what they know, what they understand, what they're used to, limited to their perspective. But your own experience, if you've documented anything at all, even if it's just your inner thoughts, if you jot down solutions or just how you feel, that is sometimes the key to how you're going to continue to get past new things moving forward. 
So it's important to study your own personalized data and even go over how you solved former problems because trust and believe that problem will resurface again at some point. Study yourself before other people master how to study you and reverse engineer your ass. But that's a whole nother sticky note in and of itself, okay? Thank y'all for watching. Thank you so much for checking the community tab. Thank y'all so much for 8,000 subscribers. Like, what the hell? Five days ago, I was thanking y'all for 7,000. And now we at 8.26 thousand. Like, what? <laughs> Thank y'all so much. I appreciate y'all. It means so, so much to me. Um, You know what else would mean a lot to me? It's free. It's free, okay? Subscribe to the backup channel, por favor. I would really appreciate it. It is the third link down below in the description box. Make sure y'all subscribe. We're going to be over there letting loose sometimes, doing more, more carefree, less put together videos, so to speak, so I don't have to be worried about prep as much. I'm really concerned and, and, and I prioritize like formatting over here on this channel, making sure that y'all have the best, most visually appetizing show in addition to some of the best information, right? But over on the backup channel, I kind of just want to give y'all something a little more raw, okay? Something that's a little more rough around the edges. Not that I want to be rough around the edges, but it's just, I don't have time to be making a thumbnail for, like, it, it's just too much. So sometimes I just want to kick back, <laughs> let my hair down, okay? And talk to y'all on the backup channel, okay? So we want to get both of those things up and running. And I'm trying to create a goal for myself. By the time we get to the end of July, I want to have a thousand subs over there. I think I got like 430 subs over there on the backup channel. So please make sure you do your due diligence and subscribe to the backup channel, which is the third link down below in the description box. Don't forget to do something relaxing today. It's a quarter to two in the morning over here in Baltimore. Baltimore stand up. So it's Thursday. It's Friday, June. We got, well, wow. Well, it is. It, it's technically Thursday, but we ain't been to thir we ain't been to work yet. So I was about to say Happy Friday tomorrow, and I mean it's still Happy Friday tomorrow, but we gotta get through today anyway. But nonetheless, it's Friday, Junior. It's something to look forward to. Let me know your thoughts on all the things we discussed in this video. Tierra Mac, her twerking. Should masturbation be at schools, or should they just be focused on um, reading, writing, arithmetic, all that other good stuff? Do you think the backlash was warranted for Macy Gray? Do you feel like she was right or wrong? Any and all thoughts, let me know how you feel about it down below in the comment section. How do you feel about Ray J's tattoo, okay, of his sister Brandy? Did you feel like it was giving Lil Wayne or something? Or was it something different? <laughs> Any and all thoughts, I can't wait to hear from you down below in the comment section. Especially even if you missed the bus, it's okay. If you missed the bus and you're chasing behind it and you're not watching live, Make sure you hit subscribe and you hit the notification bell if you haven't already so that you don't miss when I'm I'm picking y'all up honking outside at your bus stop, okay? Y'all don't want to miss any of this trending syrup, this breaking celebrity news, okay? Or this black news over here on the channel. All this syrup is always piping hot and full of some spicy-ass commentary, okay? Y'all make sure y'all drop some pancakes down below. Y'all stay beautiful, black, and blessed. I'm about to go demolish dinner. And I'm going to catch y'all sometime tomorrow. Tag me in your favorite trending topics on Instagram and on Twitter. And on Twitter in particular, okay? If you want to see how I drag a bitch, go check my Twitter because it's over there. And I'm going to catch y'all tomorrow. Hopefully, I can catch y'all earlier, okay? Bye. <laughs> on your wrist of plain but that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.